Hi, this is Jim Starkweather with the Cape Maker Network and Armorama.com. Welcome to another episode of Cracking the Box. Today we've got the French Renault FT17. This is a uh, very small tankette uh, for, dating from World War I time periods. Um, it is marked as the Tyrannosaurus Series TS08 on the box, and it is 1 35th scale in size. Um, there's another French FT117 release out, but don't confuse that with this one. It's different. This is the only 1 35th kit that's being released. Um, the kit comes with uh, full interiors as marked on the box. I'm not sure, quite sure. I can't read the text below that. It's some kind of brand, essentially. Um, otherwise, let's see, on the, on the side of the box, we have some interior art, so it shows part of that full interior you get. And then also on the other side are some markings. This one for, is for a Finnish FT-17 from the second tank company, company, February 1940. And the other one is the French FT-17 from the first company, second battalion, Le Tiger, or Le, Le Tiger, or I'm not even sure how you pronounce that in French, to be honest. <laughs> but, uh, and that one's during World War I. So you can see the tank was used over a very long period of time, um, being from a, a World War II time period to, you know, World War I time period. Um, obviously built on some kind of tractor chassis with uh, adding um, the tank armaments to it. Uh, let's go ahead and take, crack it open, though, shall we? Oh, by the way, um, obviously the box is pretty small. You can see here from my hands. It's not not a huge box, but it does is well well packaged within, as you can see. This is pretty much as as full as, as it's going to get. Uh, right off the bat, we see um, some of the side armor, which again is um, modeled on the inside as well. Um, I noted uh, it looks very clean and very, very uh, good. Um, I did notice some issues on this one with some of the push pin marks. It looks like there's some plastic residue. I'll probably get those in one of the photos I take, uh, which will be in the latter part of the review, but you can take a look for that. Otherwise, though, I see no real uh, issues in terms of flash. Looks very crisp, good details. Um, here's the, the individual track links, and they are in what looks like a kind of snap-together type black track arrangement, which is looks like it's going to be pretty pretty easy to put together. So check the instruction manual on that and see if it if that's true. Um, some additional pieces here for some of the, the um, I believe, the side um, drive uh, bits here, or, this, or the, where the drivetrain is. Um, and again, nice crisp details on this. I'm not seeing any any uh, any issues to report. Uh, here's another piece with um, now this one that actually has some, believe it or not, raised uh, ejector marks. Um, at least on this side it is. But uh, but yeah, again, I'll get some photos of those. But but otherwise, I think these will clean up pretty well. No, no real issues. And obviously, they're going to be some kind of usually uh, ejector marks. Um, or push pin marks for those types of things. Um, again, here's some of the um, small detail bits for the interior engine. So it does come with an engine with, with everything on the inside of the tank, basically. Um, again, seeing some little minor things, but I'm not sure these are some of the ammunition stowage and things like that, which I don't believe would be visible from the other side anyways. And here's some of the drive components. Um, oh, that is large. That's probably not what I'm thinking it is then. Is that part of the gun? I'm not sure. Um, there's a nice interesting uh, piece here, which is a full-size uh, tree, um, tree J, uh, and they have the the, tr the top uh, turret just mounted or, or uh, fitting in here. It's obviously a one-piece cast, one-piece cast piece. Obviously, I'm talking about plastic production here. And um, again, more detailed bits for that turret. Uh, machine gun looks looks good, and then again, here's some interesting ones that already opened these. But these are all the small uh, drivetrain wheels and so forth. And you can see they're they're done on this interesting kind of uh, offset or raised plastic uh, tree, so that again, all these small details in here, the grooving and stuff, is there, and there uh, very little um, potential cleanup you're gonna have to do on on you know the two sides of where the the part will be uh, snipped from the tree. Um, the uh, does come with some photo etch, some fairly minor looking uh, photo etch pieces here. And of course, uh, there's, I did notice uh, one issue. Um, be careful when you open the box because there are these very small metal rods. It'll focus in on my hand here, but it, you can see that, right? A little small rod. And there are two of these and they were in the box. They were not in this bag as you probably would have expected them to be. 
which also this bag includes some some springs and some other longer uh, probably suspension rods and that other piece is now hiding where did it go where did it go it was in here earlier so I'm gonna have to try to find it obviously but um, I think it's probably gotten under one of these uh, cardboard bits maybe hmm well anyways so if you get your kit and these pieces are all not in the bag as they were with mine just be careful because you don't want to it does indicate on the instructions that there are two of those rods and uh, they obviously could be easily lost if uh, if you're not careful I thought I'd remember putting them into a bag like one of the reseal bags but I don't see them now and thinking must be thinking of some other part so I will be scouring my floors oh there it is there it is I found it I found it so somehow that piece came out the other one so as I said there are two of these and uh, you don't you don't want to lose those obviously they're they're really small so keep an eye out for those when you open your box they were just floating around in the bottom of my, in the bottom of my box <laughs> All right, uh, so that all said, let's go ahead and uh, take a brief look at the history of the tank, and uh, then we'll uh, come back and, lo and uh, look at some photos. The Renault FT-17 was a French light tank that was among the most revolutionary and influential tank designs in history. The FT was the first operational armored tracked vehicle, or tank, to have its armament within a fully rotating turret. The FT's configuration, crew compartment at the front, the engine compartment at the back, and the main armament in a revolving turret became and remains the standard tank layout. Over 3,000 Renault FT tanks were manufactured by French industry, most of them during the year 1918. Furthermore, beginning in October 1918, American industry produced 950 nearly identical licensed copies of the Renault FT, the six-ton tank. The first turret designed for the FT was a circular cast steel version almost identical to that of the prototype. It was designed to carry a Hotchkiss 8mm machine gun. In April 1917, it was decided for tactical reasons that some vehicles should be capable of carrying a small cannon. The 37mm Puto gun was chosen, and attempts were made to produce a cast steel turret capable of accommodating it, but it was unsuccessful. The first 150 FTs were for training only, and made of non-hardened steel and used the first model of turret. Meanwhile, the Berlier company had produced a new design, a polygonal turret of riveted plate, which was simpler to produce than the earlier cast steel turret. It was given the name Omnibus, since it could easily be adapted to mount either the Hotchkiss machine gun or the Puto 37mm with its telescopic sight. This turret was fitted to production models in large numbers. In 1918, Paul Giraud produced a successful circular turret, which was mostly cast with some rolled parts. The Giraud turret was also an omnibus design. Giraud supplied it to all of the companies producing the FT, and in the later stages of the war it became more commonplace than the Berlier turret. The Renault FT was widely used by French forces in 1918, and by the American Expeditionary Forces in France in later stages of World War I. George S. Patton was the commanding officer and organizer of the first U.S. Light Tank Brigade, entirely made up of Renault FT tanks. After the end of World War I, Renault FTs were exported to many countries, including Poland, Finland, Estonia, Lithuania, Romania, Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia, Switzerland, Belgium, the Netherlands, Spain, Brazil, Turkey, Iran, and Japan. Renault FT tanks were used by most nations having armored forces, generally as their prominent tank type. The tanks were used in many later conflicts, such as the Russian Civil War, Polish-Soviet War, Chinese Civil War, Rif War, Spanish Civil War, and Estonian War of Independence. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that little brief uh, bit of history and, and uh, background on the tank. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the in-depth photos and uh, see how those look real close up.
Okay, well, those are the photos and, and uh, pretty much all the information I have for you today on the tank. This is just basically a preview of a video, obviously not an in-depth review. So you can kind of make up your own mind in terms of what you're seeing in the images and so forth and what uh, little bit of information I gave you there at the beginning of the review, or the beginning of the video, I should say. Um, so this tank, I believe, is still up uh, in our reviews sample area. Um, if you... Um, are interested, please contact me. Um, if you're wanting to do uh, a review, we'd probably like a full build review on this or a project um, article or something along that line. But if uh, it may already be taken, you can check our review uh, sheet. I think we have a topic in our forums on that. Uh, take a look for it, a topic I posted. And uh, I'll, put the, I'll try to put the link in the video on this, on the page, uh, this video's page on YouTube. So if you're on YouTube, uh, uh, for that reason, I would uh, also ask that you um, like this video and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. All those things help propel these videos kind of into the world of YouTube a little more and, and potentially even help out in terms of scale modeling because obviously there's not a lot of scale modeling done on YouTube right now. And uh, the more videos that people are liking on YouTube, the more chance there is for um, it to, to kind of appear higher up. So you can also do that, I believe, on the site just by going, uh, putting your cursor over the lower part of this video, and I believe there's an up-down uh, thing. They may ask you to log in. It's the only the only issue, um, which it's a, it's a Google login, so it shouldn't shouldn't be too hard for most people to log in. Well, thanks for watching, and if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them uh, here on this article or again on YouTube. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing this done in a full, uh, more expansive manner, either via article or uh, or built review. Have a good day. I apologize for the audio. I'm not sure how well I'm going to be able to show this. Oh, that's pretty well. Uh, this is the wrong way around. But you can see that the tracks basically just wedge in. Um, I just got that earlier one to do it. Let's see if I can get this to do it easily. Yep, like that. And then they're basically they're connected. Pulling on it. It's fairly uh, very nice. I mean, that is about as easy as you can get for trackless assembly uh yeah that's gonna that's gonna be a breeze so nice job man